Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to episode 167 of the Leon LeGray podcast. Your host, as always, Leon LeGray. And uh, this time, we're going to do audio-only uh, episode. And because, for one, it is very late where I'm doing the recording. And I figured, let me just go ahead and get the recording done and get this out of the way. Because it is pretty much getting way too late. And I figured, let's just do it right off the bat. But before we begin on today's episode, and before I go into my desktop stories and the um, stories that's been coming up since uh, Apple WWDC, I want to go ahead and give a few words of our sponsor today. And today's word of our sponsor is Zenny. Zenny is one of the best uh, of the best uh, glasses for uh, blue light protection, which I am wearing one of my blue, I uh, um, what you call anti blue light per, uh, protector glasses, which I think it works phenomenally great. I love it, and it does a really, really good job for. Let's just say if you're working on the computer for long and stressful hours, or if you're using it on a daily basis, which I totally recommend if you're using uh, your computer a lot for working on a daily basis. This is absolutely a must, and this works out great. So for me, I'd say go out, check out Zenny's, and go do yourselves a favor and protect those nice, pretty eyes, and and check them out. The affiliate link is in the description below. And then next, next on the sponsorship is Grubhub. This is one of the new affiliates I joined up very recently and let me tell you right there too if you're looking to get something to eat or or if you're just not filling up to standing in line over in the drive drive through of your restaurant well I got something for you and that is one thing and one thing that is this uh that is Grubhub I have used their service before in fact, one of my friends I I know, he uses Grubhub about every other week. He says he's used the service uh, plenty of times, and he says he loves it. And the fact of the matter is that he uses it because of the convenience, which I say that's awesome. I, um, it is one of the um, uh, best, what do you call it, um, food delivery services out there too. So it's just like DoorDash or uh, Uber Eats, Grubhub is something that I've used in the past. Their services are great. And I think there are tons of restaurants right now that supports Grubhub, which is something that is super amazing and unique uh, on today's world. And Grubhub is one of the best, best services I've tried out as well. And if you go down into the description of the show notes, you'll see the link down below where you guys can sign up and start ordering from here. Now, if you uh, click on the uh, promo link down below, uh, and then and then use your one your sign up to check out and and check out anywhere you need to go, do so right here too. And um, by the way, just want to let all you listeners know that that's listening is that this link is for uh, mobile web conver- uh, mobile web and desktop users only. So if you are using an application that link will not work unfortunately so please go ahead and use mobile web or a web browser on your desktop or your laptop go ahead and check out grubhub next on the sponsorship it is scooch case i love this case a lot this case has worked for me it wonders that you guys cannot even know what how i feel about scooch and very recently, I just recently uh, got the Fortress screen protector. The Fortress screen protector. Let me tell you about this. And I just received it today. Archie, excuse me, yesterday. Yesterday afternoon. And I just added it on my iPhone. It works great. I love the fact that it has extra protection on your screen. And, and you'll feel that. Nothing will ever, ever happen to it. Nothing like that, too. No damages, nothing. 
And this is the same guys. The fortress is pretty much the same guys have done Scooch Case. And I will put the link down below in the description for both Scooch, which also sells screen protectors and fortress. So go and check uh, these two out too. And if you get the case and the screen protector, um, those are two best options to have. And that's something that you guys want to consider. Also, also, I want to mention something right here is that Scooch has just released uh, brand new cases for iPhone um, 13. And that's right. iPhone 13 cases are now available. So if you're looking for a case for your own or looking for a case for your iPhone 13 phone, please go out, check out uh, Scooch's brand new case for your iPhone. Then last but not least, the um, last thing I want to go ahead and put down on tonight, today's sponsor is Blueberry. If you don't know Blueberry, uh, Blueberry is a hosting provider that's been around for a very long time. The reputation is great. The customer service is wonderful uh, through email. They respond really quickly, which I like about customer support with uh, Blueberry hosting. And the um, best part is that the prices are really, really decent for what you get. And also, if you run a large um, media uh, company, and if you need a professional hosting, Blueberry offers that for you as well. And that's one of the best things that Blueberry has. Not just um, Blueberry hosting for individuals, but also Blueberry uh, professional hosting. So if you're looking for good uh, podcasting uh, tools that can help you along with your um, business, by all means, go ahead and check out Blueberry Hosting, uh, both Blueberry Hosting and Blueberry Professional um, Hosting is going to be down in the link description below. Go ahead, check it out. You won't regret it. Now, with that said, let's get right on to today's topic of the show. All right, now today's um, topic, we're going to begin uh, what happened with Friday's episode or what's, why I didn't release it. And so in good reason about uh, what happened that time, especially Friday, uh, I was out with a friend of mine and the reason all, all that happened was for me, the way I see it was that I was finishing up my friend's belt that, that's been um, left on the side for about a whole year, and the project just didn't uh, get. Um, we just didn't get around to finishing up the project, and we were just pretty much slow to get back together. Uh, but there are actually been a couple of bumps in the roads where uh, uh, those those things really happen. Why it happened for certain reasons, and one of the main reasons I'll put down was the motherboard and I was dealing with a motherboard from Asus A S U S Asus and so the motherboard that I've had in pretty much I'm over my friend's place and of course not my place was that for one I when I placed in the uh uh wait which chip was this um AMD Ryzen 3 uh, core four, uh, CPU chip. I what happened was that the motherboard there was no sign of display coming up, and I thought I did something wrong, and so it looks like to that point, pretty much, I had to go ahead and um, um, have my friend uh purchase a brand new motherboard so that's what happened and over that time yeah i felt that the asus board uh wasn't working and i felt that with the board uh not working or i don't even know how that how um that all came about so pretty much that was my beginning of the weekend and which i was messing with my friend's computer in the um, best part of it actually i would say throughout everything else was that i actually had an extra graphics card to lend over to him 
and the the fact that I gave him my spare graphics card, and now he has um, pretty much everything uh, from Beyond the Sun, basically, uh, which is the graphics card, a good motherboard from MSI instead, which pretty much I swapped the CPU chip over to the uh, MSI motherboard, the X570 um, motherboard. And the reason I chose on that particular motherboard was the fact that it was pretty much something I've used. I loved MSI. I love the interface with MSI, I think. And just, just my opinion. But don't take it... Um, but, of course, don't have to take my word for it. However, I figured let's just try a different motherboard and see what else we can uh, use, of course. So... The decision was that MSI was just going to have to be the choice. Even though it is a gaming motherboard, I think that gaming motherboard was actually a better fit for him. And I think it worked out great towards the end, which in my calculation, I think it did. Uh, fortunately enough, because that wasn't something, uh, just to put it this way, I when we did... Um, when I did the swap, of course, not we, uh, but when I did the swap, I've I've noticed one thing was that I kept turning on the the computer for the ASUS, and the ASUS uh, com computer wasn't displaying the screen. And so moving forward or fast forward with that too, I swapped I swapped it to an uh, MSI X five seventy motherboard, and. After going through all that mess and rewiring everything. Well, and to my surprise, that worked out great. And the CPU still worked after making that swap from one motherboard to the next. Which, that turned out great. I love it. I really, really love it. <laughs> so, I mean, it was cool that um, swapping the motherboard was great. Now, one thing I'd say if... Um, Anyone plans on making that, those ideas later down the road? I want. I would suggest anybody is go ahead and get your own, um, um, get your own motherboard. Give your motherboard a try. Doesn't matter which brand it is, but that that right there, I will tell you that it will work out great. However, um, the basic motherboard that that um, I actually suggested my friend to purchase since. I know um, for his needs, it's not like gaming or anything like that. It's mostly for home and office. So that was the choice I've, I figured, hey, let me just uh, have you just get a micro uh, motherboard um, or a micro ATX board and not having to worry about uh, anything else but since I know um, he wasn't going to do anything Big, nothing like that at all. So, I suggested probably the ASUS. I think it was B, um, or excuse me, I think it was the ASUS uh, K520, something, something like that too. I don't remember the model of in the back of my mind, but however, I just tried a basic, uh, a basic board and figured let's um, let's give this a good go and let's just try it out too. However, I think uh, my if if memory serve, serves me right, I it may have been probably damage of the motherboard where the motherboard just got caught by electricity or static or or either or it could be something else. From my understanding, it could have been something else where something may have had happened to the motherboard or why the display wasn't showing, but. I noticed that the fans were still working, everything was still working, and that's what literally made me scratch my head. And I thought, hmm, there's just something's wrong with this motherboard. I've tried looking around, doing everything, so far and so far, and and no, uh, no signs of um of fixing it up too. And I've tried my best to do what I do what I could do with it and just do just that. And, and to me, I gave up on it too, because 
I did what the instructions said, what online videos or tutorials I've checked on YouTube. Zip, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that's the part I was just very much confused about the whole um, the whole thing. And I, to this point, I said, oh, screw it. We're just going to um, swap the um, Asus My Board for MSI this time because I figured, what the heck not? And let's just put some good use to good modern motherboard for my friend since I know that he's never used anything else. And and besides that, uh, I know he wants to try out a desktop for the very first time. And uh, I believe that uh, what my friend said that the last time, the last time my friend tried um, a brand new uh, computer, it was um, a very long time. It was from Hillary Packard uh, back in the late 90s when he was working over at the airline industry. I'm not going to say which one. And uh, However, he said that he purchased that HP computer way back in the day. And so far, it was um, after that purchase from um, from Delta, or from, I believe like one of his Delta perks, that he used it. It's um, let's just put it after that too. The fan of that old computer was like running so loud. It was, uh, it sounded like a turbine <laughs> engine that that was about to hit. Who knows what? God knows what. And um, yeah. And also, after finishing everything up that evening, that Friday evening, I told him that everything is all up and they're ready to go. And, and the last thing I did was make sure that the operating system was up to date. Not also just the operating system. Uh, you have to make sure that the BIOS, um, I would say don't upgrade the operating system of Windows first. Make sure that you upgrade the firmware of your, of your BIOS first before you do anything else. Because remember this, is that if you don't make a update on this, or or how often you make updates on your computers, of off your computers, let's just say, how often does anybody make an update on their computers? I would say not really, but I know that I would say there are people that still, still uh, upgrade... Um, uh, upgrade your computers uh, very often than you might think as well. So, but yeah, that's that. That's that right there. But at the end of the um, a computer built, my uh, friend was really happy where it all came down to it, and and I found out that making that swap with to a different motherboard re- pretty much uh, fixed it, and that's what we really needed. And I've. I'm actually glad that I've actually hooked my friend up to the X5070, even though I could have had put in another different build, but I've always loved the um, the uh, X570, uh, and I figured this would be a good choice for him, even though he's not a gamer. He's not. But I figured, le- why not? Let's, let's just have him spend a little bit more money and just go for that too. Even though the Asus board didn't work, and I could have have him purchase a simple board but i figured why do that and if that butter board doesn't work within the next 30 days then i have then um i would have to end up uh just go out and and just uh return it within 30 days which in retrospectively you can uh go ahead and return it but i don't know that's going to give anyone enough time to make a return off a built uh and make the return you know that's that's one thing i would say is that if you're able to do a, re- a return within the next next following days before um before a the 3 day mark or the 60 day mark however companies do it however the asus motherboard uh that was purchased on new egg so i know that return the time of return is now expired, you know, so um, we can't really make that return off that Asus motherboard. So that's, so that's out of the, that money's out of the window. So now we're going to have to 
find a way to pretty much make um pretty much make the money back and probably sell it to somebody that's interested in the motherboard and do that so that so that's um pretty much the bottom line at that point and what we're gonna do with that motherboard is pretty much a mystery at some point but it's neither here or there but um i will say that moving on forward my friend loves the belt and he's been very very happy since since uh that friday evening and he did use a little bit of um a little bit on that computer so he said he loved it a lot so i'm very happy to hear that he loves it and hopefully with the experiences that i've gone through uh when doing my my own build my and then two of my friends built one up that lives up north from me and then the one that lives like close to me uh two of my friends are very happy with the build that i've done in the past and hopefully there will be more builds to come instead of using probably like uh msi for the next build i'll probably do like a gigabyte or uh an asus motherboard or or uh, sort of motor brand that i can just play around with and experiment with too so because and again there's so many options and choices for motherboards that i can just play around and use and so on and so forth which i think uh that's an option i will give it a try at some point down the road however since um uh, this is going to be a good time to switch topics right now and for me on today's topic i want to just go ahead and uh, drift away from my built experience from the motherboard build experience now moving forward to um apple's wwdc which i know that was something that came about uh over i would say about over the week weekend ex actually a few actually a few days ago i would call it which wwdc is one if you've not heard about wwdc and you've been you've been living under a rock i don't know where you've been but however this was something that's been uh, that's been uh, going up for about fifteen, yep. So about fifteen days ago, and I'm a, I'm a little bit late on it too. But I figured this will this is something I wanted to bring up right here. Which, however, I'm not gonna go through the article on itself. But I know that iOS fifteen is pretty much one of the latest releases from Apple. I figured this will be a very good good thing to talk about since now I figured well heck why not let's uh let's give it a go what we're gonna expect on this so on and so forth right here too and I'll just go read a little bit right there and the uh, link of the article will be posted down in the show's description so I won't read all of it so so just gonna give you what's new right there so in which it says in the article Apple's WWDC 2021 is only a few days away, which by the way, uh, this is pretty much an article that came out 15 days ago and surprisingly not a lot of regarding what we'll see at this year's event has leaked in that said at 10 a.m. p.m. Uh, Pacific time through 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So and let's uh, let's go over what the headlines have talked about for this year's this year's uh wwdc which shows right there which is mac os 12 redesign macbook pro and so just what apple has confirmed already is that all their laptops are well not all their laptops excuse me with now continue on forward as a company they're now um gonna stick with the m1 chipset the excuse me the chipset sets that uh, apple's already uh, launched about uh over a year ago and so now it's going to be apple's new standard not intel anymore so um so can uh, so on this article which says now that um and now that nearly all of apple's apple's max lineup has made the shift to its m1 chip it's likely that this year Mac OS 12 could bring with its uh, significant changes. That said, nothing has really leaked about changes to the operating system. However, 
it's uh, increasingly uh, looking like we'll see an entirely redesigned MacBook Pro lineup just seven months after the uh, release of the M1 powered MacBook Pro. Once again, originally reported by, uh, where is this report? By German. The new MacBook Pro will feature upgraded Apple uh, silicone in the form of an M1X chip. An entirely redesigned body and the return of the SD card slot while the 14-inch version of the laptop is expected to uh, measure, in, measure in at the same uh, size as the current 13-inch MacBook Pro. Rumors pointed to its featuring minimalized bezels allowing Apple to fill a large display in the same body dimensions. Which is really interesting because I thought about that there and I, I, you know what, I didn't even think um, about the SD card, which I know that the SD card is is one of the most important features because there's still video editors and photo editors that still needs a SD slot and it would be the biggest mistake why Apple wouldn't ever dare to still... Um, still have an SD start slot and ignore all that too, which is crazy. Why they would ever ever ignore that in the very first place with their original M1, but now with the new Max with the M1 X chipsets, which is going to be a, a totally redesign. Um, though I don't know about a totally redesign, but it is something you know at least. Uh, it's. I will say that it is better to have something built in and integrated and then having to leave all the features out, which I don't know. It's a big mistake that what they've done before to have them take out the SD slot, which in theory, in my, in my thinking, they should never have taken out the SD slot uh, at the very beginning because I think it is one of the most important things if you're going to have a MacBook Pro. So... That's one thing I was having that gripe uh, before um, before all this too, because I think it is an option that they should have had have uh, had for um, already already to begin with. But just like Apple, they always they always tend to screw something out one one way or the other, you know. So they're not perfect uh, by all means, all means of of any stretch of the imagination, for sure. But it is what it is, but at least um one thing I will say certainly is that at least they're stepping up a little bit too to see that hey um we made a mistake, and at least they're going to add things that they've pretty much now before initially took off. Which, uh, funny enough, they're now at least putting it back on the MacBook Pro at least. Um, let's see, and one I think one of the big big news i would say not the hugest news of it but what i say with apple's wwdc is where for me apple is apple's tv and this is one thing about apple i don't know um if apple is has already has a huge uh marketplace i'm sure they do i'm really sure they they do have a big, big marketplace with uh, everything that they own, they have right here. But Apple TV, the Apple TV Plus, which by the way, I have the subscription for it. I don't watch it very often. I actually do have it for about a whole year until it expires. And however, I just don't know if Apple are in that in that matter, they're going to end up releasing brand new original content, which that questions a lot about what I'm saying. I'm just saying here is that is how successful is Apple really is with, um, uh, with streaming. So there's pretty much tons of questions there. And then, um, for what I've understood the last time, especially when over on Apple's camp and where I've um, checked on um, in recent news. And so, and I've looked at other uh, articles, especially 
and uh, variety. In fact, it, I believe it was um, MS, uh, MSN that actually re, um, re-linked a variety article right there too. Um, re, uh, yeah, reblogged a variety article, excuse me, which uh, in here it says, Apple told the International Alliance of Theater Stage Employees, which is on top of cusp of a, a, a member vote to authorize a strike that Apple TV Plus had fewer than 20 million subscribers in the U.S. and Canada as of July 2021, according to the union, by claiming it had uh, under the 20 million subscriber threshold for the U.S. and Canada under the union's uh, certain contract, Apple is able to pay discounted rates to production crew members than stream providers with more than 20 million like Netflix, uh, Hulu, according to the IATSE rep confirming an earlier CNBC re- uh, report. Apple has said that uh, said it pays crew members in the line with other streamers. <clears throat> so a uh, fewer than 20 million. Well, it's not extravagant. Uh, a lot of members really it's not a lot a lot of members and this is nothing i uh, i will say that when i heard previous reports about this i for me i wasn't really surprised about the whole news at all and um and for me i still have apple tv plus subscription which um the way i i got i got it for free for a whole year was uh, i purchased a a brand new iPhone, which is the Apple uh, SE uh, second edition, which I have to say, I like the phone. It's great. And this is, and what you get with the phone is uh, a one year free of Apple, which is cool. I think it's an amazing thing just to have along with it too. Now, for instance, like I've watched um, Good Morning and yeah, Good Morning, which is about uh, um, a uh, pretty much about reporters, uh, uh, news anchors in the mornings, and that they report right in the morning, which I think it's good. Uh, which, however, I don't think that's a show that's an audience for everybody. And then the other one that's actually um, exclusive for Apple TV, which is Snoopy. I actually enjoyed the Snoopy episodes. Um, uh, which is pretty much based on Charlie Brown. If you guys don't know what it is, uh, I like it. I I actually like the um, the five the six episodes that they had right there. I don't know if they're gonna show more uh, content like that for Snoopy. I don't know if it's just a one season uh, thing or a two season thing. Uh, I'm not too sure actually. Uh, though if it's worth uh, five dollars a month, then cool. I guess. But I just don't know if um, Apple TV is going to be sold for everybody because that's one thing you have to realize that, um, first of all, everyone is going to have Netflix, Hulu, uh, and then, uh, and then an, an additional cost to Apple, which I have no idea. That's going to be a widely popular thing too. And that's my question about this is that is this going to be sold to everybody? And I don't know who's going to be the main audience for that too. And actually, uh, I still have my Roku. I believe my Roku is still linked to Apple again. And I don't know if it's going to become a massive hit. And and let's see what's going to come around next year, around 2022. And if Apple is going to, let's just say, for instance, if there's that big big exclusive who is going to be that big exclusive that's going to sell apple you know that's one thing i've um i'm that's one thing i've you've got to be certain like who's gonna um, who's gonna be the one that uh that's going to make apple that money that yearly yearly revenue especially um uh, there could be that one big show that's going to make people run uh, in and subscribe to Apple, and to me, uh, after this subscription, for to tell you the truth, I don't even think that's gonna keep me as a member for a very, a very long time because I know I'm am gonna just stick with um, 
uh, pretty much what I have. I know I'm using my uncle's uh, Netflix description. Like for me, I'm not a active uh, subscriber myself, and I just don't plan to uh, for movies. But uh, Apple right here, I think uh, Apple will end up making it some at some point too. We'll see. We'll see, because that's something I will look into. Um, Maybe uh, if if Apple does bring in that one exclusive um, during next year, that'll be cool. Uh, but going on um, into WWDC now for news on arcade, I'm sure that like um, like many of you, I'm sure you guys are uh, subscribed to Apple Arcade about each month, and I'm sure that Apple Arcade is doing very very well. And like for instance, I. Um, just checked on this uh, advertisement for Oregon Trail. And I believe this is based off an old 1980s game. Um, not too sure about that, too. You guys can correct me on the comments down below on YouTube or Odyssey, whichever video platform that you use, or um, um, or comment me over on Podchasers or anything like that and correct me about if I'm wrong about it, too. But it does look a little bit interesting. It has that 2D... Uh, 2d ish like um style game and i think it's a um, really cool a uh, really cool game uh, just by the scene on the advertisements i've seen on snap and all that too but overall though i don't know if um uh, oregon trail is going to get that big of a commercial success and as far as our apple arcade and the rest of the gaming uh lineup like I know, it's gonna be obvious that that um, Pac Man. It's not. It's nothing new. Pac Man uh, for one. I think Pac Man is gonna do successfully fine. Which I know that's uh, Namco's uh, biggest selling game of all time. That which that's gonna bring them uh, dollars, uh, more dollar signs, of course, because of the Pac Man brand. <laughs> and um, and I know that there's gonna be so many other games that's gonna be Apple exclusive as well. Uh, but as far as I can t- tell you guys is that I'm not the, um, jumping onto the Apple arcade bandwagon just because uh, just because the way it is. And I'm just not going to go do it. So that's just me. Uh, but regardless, um, I'm sure that the WWDC um, stuff that, that's been announced with over on Apple side, which to me, it's not bad. I And I know I haven't paid too much uh attention on apple as a reason because like for me like ever since they've switched on the uh apple the chipset from intel to uh m1 chipsets i think a lot of people have not uh been very very happy and and i'm sure that apple will do just fine there's still going to be a cult a way you call, call it um a quote uh cult excuse me cult uh following on on apple uh Apple buy buyers that's gonna still stay with the cult of Apple, which um, that's pretty much the best way to describe it, basically. And I don't just subscribe to this whole cult cult mentality, <laughs> the cult of Apple, that what everyone says on the internet. I just don't. And to me, I love electronics of all sorts. And to me, I like just to diverse myself to many different options. So that'll be something I would love to get on. Uh, I'd love to just get on with different things, like especially like in my channel, I haven't talked too much about Linux. I'd love to bring more light to the Linux community, which I, I would love to talk about, uh, of course, because I know with Linux, there's so much, um, um, there's just so much that you can even follow up on. And especially there's tons of distribution that you can't really keep up with Apple. This is just one distribution. It's just Apple, of course, or the Mac OS or the iOS or, or the iPad pad OS. So it's, there's, um, they have their own ecosystems, which, uh, they similarly do similar things, but it's all in one, uh, wall garden basically for Apple. And, uh, with that said, uh, I think um, Apple have definitely have brought in a very interesting WWDC. But again, I would love to follow up a little bit on Friday's show, and which hopefully I'll bring in more light into it too. But we'll see on that point. Okay. And then everybody, and the topic I wanted to bring in 
I think the main thing is uh, Tesla. I think uh, a lot of people or a lot of uh, people in the tech world or the tech enthusiasts that listens to my podcasts that are pretty much not just interested in just desktop or laptops, but tech in general, especially. And as far as cars, cars has been a very big advancement, which I know a lot of people that are into cars, they love to talk about the tech in cars, everything like that too. And especially one thing that comes in mind, the big, big popularity right now, it is uh, Tesla, you know, and Tesla is now on people's minds. What people are looking into Tesla, what people perceive in Tesla. And I think Tesla is a really interesting uh, thing now, which um, that's um, it's very interesting because I when Tesla has when people talked about Tesla a few years back, actually, when that was starting to come up and that was such a very new concept back then. And a lot of people were getting onto it earlier before I did. I, very honestly, though, I, I for me, I didn't um, I didn't get into the bandwagon with Tesla because I wasn't so interested in the the um, car tech space, as you will. And so and then until one day. I know um, me and a friend were talking about it, especially. And um, he's looking into getting a Tesla himself, and at which it looks like it is going to happen. And the question that came to mind was, will I ride a Tesla or will I own a Tesla myself? So I'll just answer it right now. So the first thing I want to go ahead and answer, the first one is, Will I own a Tesla? To question to you, all listeners is, no, I will not own a Tesla myself. Uh, to me, it still has a lot of uh, tweaks and things that they still have to work on. So the self-driving concept is still a very new phase that um, that still needs to be worked up. It's not. Um, it's still not ready for it on the road in the United States, of course. So still has tons of tweaks and things that they still got to work on especially um yeah and i i will say that i do like the cars however will i ride a tesla the question will be yes i would i would love to ride a tesla and try it out myself of course uh and of course i would love to drive it out and see and feel the yoke um steel steering wheel which uh in tesla that's what they have for their wheel which is the yoke and um, they don't have like this thing called the steering wheel, which is a round steering wheel that most uh, car uh, manufacturers add into their vehicles, which is pretty much the most modern, uh, pre- pretty much the most modern cars. They have tons of um, steering wheels that everyone uses. And um, and I remember my f- my friend talks about Teslas all the time. And now after he's been following up on the, on the news on it, and with Tesla, the I'm sure that everybody knows that the chip shortages is still going on, especially um, the chips are are being developed in Asia, and then uh, and then they have to put the chips right into mostly on most uh, modern cars, um, and it's not just a uh, Tesla that they're um, uh, they're just adding on the chips onto those vehicles, but you have a uh, Ford that's trying to. Uh, starting to get ahead and I believe GM as well um, again I'm, I might be wrong on this as well because I'm not looking up my sources but I'm just thinking of what I've I had previously remembered uh, and what I've looked into the last time <clears throat> again I think um, Tesla has gone uh, further ahead with most 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 American cars of today and to me um, when uh, when everyone goes out and talks about Tesla I mean Tesla's is such a big company to follow up on now. And I, for me, I, I'm sure that I will end up looking back and say, man, why didn't I get into the Tesla uh, thing early on? And why didn't I not uh, go into, um, into it when people were talking about it? And to me, I don't get, I never get into the whole <laughs> craze about what's new, what's, uh, what's happening, which I, which I know that this is a technology show. I know a lot of people wants to get into the 
the brand spanking new uh, thing that's happening. And I'm sure that、um, I would be excited about it too, about tech cars. But to me, I'm just I'm not、um, always down with what's new and what, what's latest and greatest. And、um, the self driving thing is very, very、uh, interesting concept, especially.、Um, I mean, in what,、um, what I can tell you from firsthand experience, which I know a friend of mine has、um, rode one,、uh, rode in someone's Tesla, which is absolutely cool that、um, they've,、um, that he's actually、uh, ridden one already. And that's an amazing thing, too. So now,、um, What I can tell you is, I,、uh, I won't even bring up his name because privacy reasons. But what I can say for the most part is, he's、uh, already made the purchase for a Tesla, which I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. That's a very cool thing to,、um, that, that he's done. And the reason is that he's already invested in、uh, money already after the money he's saved in for many, many years. And he wants to get on, on it, which I said, hey, you know, good for you. And that's an amazing thing. He wants to、um, ride、uh, his via- his、um, probably his last vehicle before he dies, which I know <clears throat> I know this is、uh, anyone's dream to ride on a self driving car. And the concept of having、uh, a vehicle with、um, no gasoline, which is so cool. And, <laughs> and that you can just use the, the battery right there too, which I think is absolutely fine and dandy. Now, I always have questions about the battery,、um, especially how the self driving thing, especially how they're going to work out the battery. And, like, let's say if、um, you get into an accident and what happens if、um, the battery goes out and stuff like that, too. And I've always had tons of questions with the Teslas. And it is a very、um, interesting concept with. What they've done with this vehicle. I mean, the developers and the team behind、uh, Tesla is absolutely f-、uh, phenomenal with that, too. And though I don't want to just jump on and say that, hey, Tesla has been the best thing since、uh, sliced bread. <laughs> and I'm sure it's, it isn't really, too, because I'm sure by the time uh, uh, technology changes within the decade or 20 years from now, who's going to lead up to Tesla? And And to me, when I、um, first heard about the Tesla, the first thing I, that comes in mind was、uh, the DeLorean back in the days. And I remember that concept was very, very short lived, you know, and that wasn't something that, that made it、uh, for a very long time. And so,、uh, and so, you know, that was just the one thing that,、uh, and that was. Uh, that was pretty much, I would say, ahead of Tesla's time. And now you have the Tesla right there. And this is something that a lot of people are going to jump into because、um, wouldn't that be such an amazing idea where、um, you don't have to put gasoline and spend money,、uh, spend going out, going to a gas station in, to, in doing that? You know, I mean, first of all,、uh, that eliminates、uh, gas and having to put.、Uh, Waste so much、uh, money putting extra fuel into your tank、uh, for these uh, I, uh, ICE, which is the、uh, in- invertible combustion、uh, engines. Which that, I think those are going to be the days that it's going to be pretty much over. And then,、um, and once you know it, the days of like the Fords, the GMs, the Uh, in, ma- in many of the American cars, especially the Japanese cars that are still going to be behind of the Tesla, it's going to be the days of those guys are going to be long, long gone. So, again, it's, it's going to be interesting where those many of those car manufacturers are going to, how they're going to go about this too, because those in the back of their minds, those car manufacturers aren't even ready. And the、uh, stock prices for Tesla,、uh, the last time my friend told me, and I had to look this up to verify, it, it was actually almost close to $800.、Uh, yeah, pretty much $800 in value in stock. In fact, I'm going to look up Tesla right now, how much it's、uh, valued right now. So let me just ask Siri Hey Siri,、uh, how much is、uh, Tesla's price worth? 
Shoot. So seven hundred seventy-one dollars and two cents. Uh, by the time I'm looking at this, holy cow. So yeah, it's almost uh, close to eight hundred. So you know that Tesla is doing well and outperforming Ford or GM, which it's absolutely cr insane. And if I, that's one thing I would say is that if I have gone in, in uh, early in Tesla, uh, when the price was low, man, I would have been an early adopter, an early investor in Tesla. Again, I didn't get into it, so wah, wah, sad. <laughs> so, I mean, again, this is um, absolutely changing, especially. Uh, it changing especially and you know that um these guys um like especially like for gm like toyota which is japanese brand by the way uh hyundai uh honda and it's so many other brands are they're, they're gonna have to question how we're gonna keep up with uh with the new age of cars especially how we're gonna um, keep up you know that's a very good question for many of the car fat uh manufacturers because uh, and to me, I don't even have a, a simple question for it because, for one, I don't think in my in the back of my mind, there's not even a simple simple thing to uh, think this over, and you know, and how they're gonna catch up with uh, with Tesla, because there's not even a simple simple answer to this too. Because if um, that's one thing I've talked to with a friend of mine is that if these um, car manufacturers don't change they're gonna get wiped out and very much where i can put it this way is well if well you're he, you're right and if they don't do something within by next year or by less than five years from now you know and how they're gonna catch up with the with tesla right now because right now they're catching up and thinking ahead how we're gonna become energy efficient how we're gonna Think about safety and all that. Okay, well, guess what? They've going to have to uh, keep up with the trends and uh, make sure that what they can do to change things into their vehicles, right? And um, and for me, however, as someone that is just observing it and what I've checked on other images with Tesla, what I really like the most on it, on it is the yoke steering wheel, which is awesome. I think it's pretty fancy. Not to leave anything out of detail, one of the um, things I've what I was told about this was that the yoke is uh, right off the bottom of the odometer or the speed speedometer, which um, something that I was told about, which is uh, cool actually, to hear that um, the odometer the way they have it there now, it's um, pretty much moved them. Um, yeah, it, um, what you call the yoke steering wheel is not in the wheel, way of the odometer. So if you have to look into the speed and the mileage, then that's really cool to see that there instead. Instead of the um, the wheel in the way, which I know that that can be um, cumbersome. Like the wheel can just get in the way when you're like, in, especially uh, for instance, like just to give an example where. If you look into most cars, uh, most cars, uh, pretty much the steering wheel is it'll be in the way um, of the um, odometer, right? And of course, you have to look over it. Um, but uh, for this one, in this um, uh, with this one here, the uh, yoke wheel or the yoke steering, it's it's not in the way. It's actually on the bottom of the uh, pretty much on the bottom of the unit. Uh, where and also the odometer is on the top and this yoke is on the bottom, which it's a very different concept too. It's very um nice that they actually had that they've done that move right there, which this it's pretty fun. It's um it's very different from any other vehicle, and he and my friend keeps up with so much Tesla news, which I don't because I don't plan on only one uh down the line. Uh, however, he said himself that um. He's talked to, to me about so much things that Tesla would have had put in, especially um, there's people out there that aren't crazy for the yoke steering wheel. And there are people out there that are looking into, uh, how do I put this? Looking to uh, having a steering wheel added 
on the um, Teslas. And what I what I've understood, and I believe uh, Elon Musk may have addressed this especially, especially. And he said that um, if you're if you want a steering wheel for your vehicle, uh, go get it elsewhere. And he is defending that yoke steering wheel 100%. He's not going to change anything with the Teslas, which I thought that's, you know, at least he stand firm on, the, on that too, which which is good enough, at least uh, for his vehicle. He wants he wants it the way he wants it. So, I mean, go, go on him, I guess, because, you know, there are tons of steering wheels in in many, many car car brands out there too, which I... Uh, which for me, I've seen that a lot with many vehicles. Whenever I'm I'm going out, whatever I've used uh, uh, brands like Honda, you know, that's something I've I will say that there's so many steering wheels in so many vehicles there out there. I mean, nobody is is even thinking about the concept of uh, the yoke steering wheel as of yet. However, too, but I do think that so many brands out there, they are so behind uh, behind with the times is that I don't think they don't even know um, what they're going to do. You know, they just have no idea how they're going to successfully get it out, you know? So, so that's, that's an interesting uh, thing to uh, think about because no other brand is, is doing it. What Tesla is do, doing, especially, but um, however, will I ever own a Tesla probably down the line or think about uh, only one? Probably, I would say later down the line, but right now, it's not in my budget to hold one or add um, a Tesla right in right in my urgent list. To me, that's something that's not very urgent, and that's something I will have to save up down the line too. So if I want to own one, but with that said, um, just to put it on the close, I do think that the Tesla talks or the Tesla topics, it's a very interesting one because. I've um haven't got into many uh, podcasts where I've talked about the future of cars. I mostly talk about computers, um, mobile phones, all that you know, which is very common in my show to talk about. But Teslas is something I will love to uh, film one day and record uh, my experience with a Tesla if I ever get one or get down into one. Uh, something I would love to record on. Uh, right on my iPhone and just uh, do it one of these days too, which I think could be very amazing to do and love to get like a pro- probably like a dy- not a dynamic mic, probably a condenser mic for my uh, iPhone and probably do that one of these days too if I have it. You know, that will be super, super neat because I know um, I won't say much. I really, really won't say much about it to tell you the truth. But one of these days, uh, if I ever get into one, I'll let everyone know, my viewers, my listeners. But my most of my experience will end up going up on uh, on YouTube and Odyssey so you guys can see the um, whole experience, what I've gone through with a Tesla. So that will be something I would love to do one of these days uh, when, I get, uh, when I get out on the road and, and do this myself. So uh, pretty much I went ahead and talked about uh, Tesla's uh, for some time, which now it is time to top it off towards the outro and to all my questions to all my listeners and to any of my viewers that are are listening to this uh, on YouTube or Odyssey. Uh, what do you guys think about the future of cars? Do you think that um, the um, car manufacturers will change? Do you think that many of these uh, manufacturers will ever Think about putting um, uh, uh, battery power cars into their own vehicles. Uh, what do you guys think about this too? Because I think um, so many things are definitely changing. Especially, you're you're seeing tons of um, charging stations out in many parts of the country, and the charging stations now um, now are being added into people's own garages, which I've actually seen one firsthand, which. It's cool. That way, you're not going through who and um, and and just spending money. Like I've said, spending money on gas, and I'm sure that the electricity is is not that much. I believe that what I've heard um, the last time I've heard was that the adding a supercharger uh right into your garage. You definitely have to schedule this out with your um 
with your power company or I believe so or a installer someone that knows how to install superchargers so you have to get in contact with them too because I heard that the regular chargers for uh, pretty much the electrical chargers are not it doesn't really do well and what I understand is that it's a very very slow charge so the charging these um uh with these superchargers is that um it pretty much does uh, an overnight charge so if you leave it um within 24 hours it charges it real fast for you so it's no problem right there when you're out on the road like next morning or next day so it's really cool to see that too but it is a very interesting concept something um i do like to follow up again too so anyways love to hear your comments down below and don't forget to comment if you um if you have any questions or if you have anything to say on it too or whatever whatever is on your mind too but with that said name's leon i am out uh out here on today's episode 167 of the Leon and great podcast your host as always and i'm out peace